Part 2. Definitions and Axioms of the Ethics by Spinoza. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. The Ethics by Benedict de Spinoza. Translated by R. H. M. Elwes. Part 2. Definitions and Axioms. Part 2. On the Nature and Origin of the Mind. Preface. I now pass on to explaining the results which must necessarily follow from the essence of God, or of the eternal and infinite being. Not indeed all of them, for we proved in part 1, proposition 16, that an infinite number must follow in an infinite number of ways, but only those which are able to lead us, as it were, by the hand, to the knowledge of the human mind and its highest blessedness. Definitions Definition 1 By body I mean a mode which expresses in a certain determinate manner the essence of God, in so far as he is considered as an extended thing. See Part 1, Proposition 25, Corollary. Definition 2. I consider as belonging to the essence of a thing that, which being given, the thing is necessarily given also, and which being removed, the thing is necessarily removed also. In other words, that without which the thing, and which itself without the thing, can neither be nor be conceived. Definition 3. By idea, I mean the mental conception which is formed by the mind as a thinking thing. Explanation. I say conception rather than perception, because the word perception seems to imply that the mind is passive in respect to the object, whereas conception seems to express an activity of the mind. Definition 4. By an adequate idea, I mean an idea which, in so far as it is considered in itself, without relation to the object, has all the properties or intrinsic marks of a true idea. Explanation. I say intrinsic in order to exclude that mark which is extrinsic, namely the agreement between the idea and its object, ideatum. Definition 5. Duration is the indefinite continuance of existing. Explanation. I say indefinite because it cannot be determined through the existence itself of the existing thing, or by its efficient cause, which necessarily gives the existence of the thing, but does not take it away. Definition 6. Reality and perfection I use as synonymous terms. Definition 7. By particular things, I mean things which are finite, and have a conditioned existence. But if several individual things concur in one action, so as to be all simultaneously the effect of one cause, I consider them all, so far, as one particular thing. Axioms 1. The essence of man does not involve necessary existence. That is, it may in the order of nature come to pass that this or that man does or does not exist. 2. Man thinks. 3. Modes of thinking, such as love, desire, or any other of the passions, do not take place unless there be in the same individual an idea of the thing loved, desired, etc. But the idea can exist without the presence of any other mode of thinking. 
4. We perceive that a certain body is affected in many ways. 5. We feel and perceive no particular things, save bodies and modes of thought. Nota bene. The postulates are given after the conclusion of Proposition 13. End of Part 2 Definitions and Axioms Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater Recorded in London, England